Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. It's been three years since my husband cheated on me with my mother and came out as a post separation. TW, child molestation, child molester. Within 24 hours I caught my husband cheating on me with my mother, and learned that he molested his little sister from ages 2 to 14. It was the most horrific experience of my life, and I truly lost my mind for the better part of the year. Let me clarify, ex-husband. It's been a hard few years to recover, and I'm still trying to let go of survival tactics that I had learned being in such a bad marriage with such a traumatic ending, but the progress I've made is amazing. I just wanted to share because 1, I have no one to talk to about my hardships, and 2, I know many people think that they can't do it. I had two children under 2. No job. No home. No family. No money. I didn't think I would make it. But look at me, living and shit, two hearts. You will prevail. Edited to add, I am remarried. Please stop messaging me, pick up lines, and grotesque messages. Using this group as a tool to pick up hurt people is gross. You are amazing, op. You survived something that a lot of people could not survive. You are the epitome of the word strength. And now you are here encouraging others. Big kudos to you. Your kids are very fortunate to have such a determined mom. So much respect and admiration for you. This made me cry, thank you. This means the world. I know it sounds kinda silly, but it seems like my friends downplayed the whole situation. I know that no one can truly relate to what I went through, but it seemed as if no one cared or thought of it as a big deal. I quickly learned the world doesn't stop turning for your bullshit lol. Did your ex ever go to prison or jail for what he did? No. The night of everything happening, he held me hostage and told me I was his wife, and I wasn't going anywhere. I called 911 and he left. When I called them back to tell them that he left, they said they had to come out anyways. They did, and I almost got in trouble. They were hounding me asking me if I had killed him, and if he was okay, where he was etc. His little sister did not want to press charges or go forward with anything unless it was absolutely necessary to make it where he didn't get visitation with the kids. His little sister had no recollection of the molesting until he messaged her on Facebook saying really crude things like I've always wanted to duck you since you were a little girl and you're my biggest fantasy. She said she was flooded with awful memories. I didn't want to put her through more than she was already going through. It was also past the seven years of limitation, so my lawyer said nothing could have been done. It was a tough decision to make, protect future women in his life, or protect me and mine. I knew in my heart that the law was not on my side. I had to do a hell of a lot of thinking on how to make it where he never saw my kids again. He was super abusive, and I had to pull a lot of strings to even get him to sign divorce papers. I luckily outsmarted him and the system, and he will never have visitation with my kids. I send many prayers out to his future partners, but my family is safe. I hope I don't get too judgmental. Nobody has any right to judge you for doing what you needed to do to protect yourself and your kids up. They have not walked in your shoes. Please remember that, heart. You go full mama grizzly bear and protect your children. That is your number one tip top priority. All else is a horizon distant second. File restraining orders if necessary. Brutally enforce them, no nonsense, no nothing. You will get my judgment. 100% spot on. High marks, high praise. You made the right choice. This. There no ducking way that animal would ever be allowed near my children. I'm so sorry you went through this and that you have to continue to go through it. I'm getting anxious just thinking about it. Sends you platinum award in judgment. You're so inspiring. Thank you. That seriously means so much more than you will ever know. Edit, that goes to everyone on this post as well. 
it shouldn't matter, but the support and encouragement that I did the right thing matters a ton and gives me a validation I didn't realize I needed. Holy shit, that's a lot to go through at once. I feel for you. If you don't mind, how old was he when he was molesting his sister? Was he the same age range? Thanks. He is six years older than her. What was your mother's explanation? That she knew there was something sexually deviant about him and she had to play into it to figure it out. Not that I believe her, I think she just lucked out. How does having sex with your husband help her figure that out? I guess a bad excuse was better than no excuse. I hope you still don't talk to that trash of a mother. I hope you don't mind me asking but do you currently have a relationship with your mother? I personally don't think I could ever maintain a relationship with that kind of individual who would sleep with their own daughter's husband. I was going to avoid answering this question because to be quite honest I'm an insanely sensitive person, and the last time I shared this story I got a lot of hell for my answer to this question. It took me about two years to forgive her, but yes, I do have a relationship with her now. When I had read stories of mothers sleeping with or hitting on their sills I was always like no way in hell would I ever forgive that. And it's even quite embarrassing to say that I forgave it. But I did for a few reasons. I have no family and very few friends. My mom was my absolute best friend, her and my sister are the only family that I have. She was a huge part of my daily life. It was too hard to lose her on top of having nothing. Another reason being the sheer amount of pure hatred I had for her for so long. I never understood forgiving someone for yourself until this situation. I was so angry, jaded, bitter and miserable. I am still so very hurt by her actions and I'll never forgive her fully, but it is what it is. I'm doing my best to move forward. Holidays have become the best. I grew up with an abusive stepdad and then followed suit and married an abusive asshole. Holidays were the worst. Every. Single. One. It was like they went above and beyond their usual assholeness on holidays. I am so happy to say that I'm three years completely free, and holidays are amazing now. I am remarried and have three wonderful children. Holidays are fun and exciting and drama free. Yellow heart. Happy Easter to those that are celebrating. And to those who aren't, have an absolutely wonderful day. May your coffee be especially good this morning. Why not to do the pick me dance? Rant. First let me start by saying, they ducked up, not you. No matter how much attention they needed, how absent you were, or how you lacked being romantic, whatever the fault they have either pinned on you or you have pinned on yourself, it doesn't justify cheating. We are humans, given the ability to speak, to communicate our needs even from infancy. The person I want to spend the rest of my life with will communicate with me when there's a problem, not resort to sex outside of our marriage. Is that something you seek in a partner? The blame is something that needs to happen, for your coping and for their guilt. You need it as a reason to justify what happened to you, and a reason to reconcile, while they need it as a mask to cover their actions. Don't let it fool you, no matter how bad you were, their actions are worse, and they are not justified. Cheating comes with the assumption that your partner will leave if you cheat. These cheaters don't care. They don't care if your marriage is ruined. Their momentary happiness means more to them than your entire well-being and relationship. I personally want to be with someone who couldn't hurt me like that. If they have it in them to hurt me so badly, I simply don't want to be with that person. Do you want to be with someone who has no mind for others? Not just others, but the person they sleep beside every night. The person who brushes their teeth beside them while they shit. The person who they vowed their life to. I know firsthand that being cheated on makes you feel so less than. You feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you need to prove that you're good enough. And that's all fine, but go prove it to someone who gives a damn. And if you really want to reconcile, let them beg for you. Let them realize how bad they ducked up. Let them hurt. Let them lose. Let them wonder what's wrong with them. The more you beg for their approval, 
beg for them to pick you, the more they find their actions justified, the more likely that they will repeat cheating, and much more likely that they won't hear you out and even rebel against your pleas. These people aren't normal people with normal feelings. The more they see how weak you are, the more they'll run to the person they're cheating on you with. If you beg someone to pick you after they've done something so horrendous, it takes away all of your self-worth, your self-esteem, your dignity. I wish you luck in your endeavors. I survived. I more than survived, I thrived. The worst possible moments of my life turned out to be my biggest blessing. It can be the same for you too. Lack of remorse from cheating spouses. Rant. When my ex-husband cheated on me with my mom, I thought they would both be begging for my forgiveness and be so remorseful. But my ex-husband would just say things like I love you but I'm in love with your mom or weird ass shit that made things even worse. And my mom was begging for forgiveness at first, and I had no choice but to live with her while I went through my divorce. It was either her, or my child molesting cheating abusive ex. But she ended up kicking me and my two babies out because I had attitude and she didn't understand why I was dwelling. I think some people just really lack empathy. Maybe they wouldn't feel the same way about getting cheated on. But for me getting cheated on was just horrible. Cheating is the worst thing you could do to me. I can't believe our spouses can just cheat without a care. I couldn't ever cheat or I would feel so insanely guilty and disgusting. Why do these people not care? People are terrible. That mother ducker. Too soon my man, too soon. LOL. I didn't catch that. Nice haha. There. Some humor. It's funny because it is horrifically true. God love your heart, sweetie. We're all here holding your hand. Yeah. Sneaky. I heard the term mother ducker in stories and movies she should start North Carolina with her ex-husband or the mother ducker and ex-mother. That's pretty ducking low life shit. Please get away from those demonic reprobates. 3 years free. It was easy to move on from him considering the child molester part, woman shrugging, still ducked with my mind a lot, yeah, but never was a question to stay or be friendly with him. In your op you said some people lack empathy. I think the percentage is pretty high but in your mom's case, I think you being there was a constant reminder of just how ugly she is inside. It also might have been a blessing in disguise because without it, you might still be with him. I wish you the best. With your mom. How can a mother do this to her own child? I hope you'll get better. Yeah I would somewhat understand the guy, not the cheating part, but the heart wants what the heart wants and there are ways to follow it without cheating, but for the mom to do that to her own kid, wow. Some parents don't deserve to be called mom slash dad. Thinking about it makes me gag. That's far more than lack of empathy. That's serious self-absorbed behavior. To put your own needs over your child and then kick them out because of their trauma she caused, Your mother will die alone one day surrounded by nobody. I don't mean to sound unempathetic because I promise I am but why in the actual effort and? Is that man not in jail for molesting his sister? You don't sound unempathetic, no worries. It was a past statute of limitations in our state, seven years. She was 2 to 14 at the time of the molestation and was 22 when she came to me and told me. She hadn't remembered the abuse until he was messaging her on Facebook saying he wanted to duck her as a little girl and that she was his biggest fantasy. It took her a couple weeks after he messaged her those things to call me and tell me. I definitely tried to take legal action, but there were a lot of things involved. She didn't want to pursue anything unless it was absolutely needed so that he couldn't see my kids. Also, the cops were more on his side of things, and questioning me on if I had killed him lol. Such a long story with so many little details. But all in all, statute of limitations. Also want to add that my kids and I are three years free, no contact. Though I worry about his future partners, I had to choose my own when I knew the law wouldn't be on my side. It was all very tricky but I came out on top and my kids are safe. 
I asked myself the same thing. And searched for the answer. I spent a good bit of my grieving period trying to pick the brain of a cheater. The truth is they can come up with any excuse they want, but the fact is they are weak. They are weakened by temptations. Some are completely soulless and do without a care, others have a little remorse. But not enough to repair the damage done. You are better off and always remember that. Your happy ending will come, just not with that A. These people are like psycho serial killers where a person kills people with no guilt and would love to do that again with others, cheaters are the same as these predators. They will cheat and make cold faces towards so the whole time and when they get caught they will just make an excuse or blame you for the situation. So don't give them another chance or they will harm you in the worst possible way. Just stay away from these people. You need to get as far away as possible from these two evil cruel disgusting humans. Your mom is the worst person on the planet. Scum. I am so sorry. NVMIC you're gone. Cheaters don't have remorse if they are narcissistic. Or they do have remorse but don't show it because of ego or mental illness. Your ex is violent he is not normal therefore you cannot hold him to normal standards. Is he in jail? Out of morbid curiosity. Are your mom and ex-husband together? Did they continue the affair after you found out? That's a truly despicable way to cheat on someone. No they aren't, and to my knowledge they haven't spoken since I found out. But who knows, don't trust him lol. I haven't spoke to him since signing divorce papers years ago. We have two children together but he will never see them. Not only did he cheat on me with my mom, he molested his little sister and was messaging her disgusting things on Facebook right around the time of my mom. It was a hell of a 24 hours of finding awful shit out lol. Nine days after telling me, through me pressing him, that he had ducked multiple prostitutes and spoken to girls on dating apps, he asked me why I was still upset. Because after all, it had been nine days right? Why can't you just get over it? The days after this, he told me that he didn't regret it, that he would do it again, but that as a silver lining, I should know there was nothing wrong with me. I was his perfect woman. He affirmed that I did everything for him, I cooked, I cleaned, I did everything in the bedroom. I'm intelligent, popular, the cool girl, envy of his friends. And yet here we were. He said there was no reason, he was completely cognizant, he just wanted to try something different. It's all totally innocent and totally not a big deal. He asked me why I was so upset. He asked me why I was so upset over something as trivial as sex when I meant more to him than these hookers, because he had an emotional connection to me he was in love with me. His first girlfriend of 8 years, since high school. When I cried silent tears, he speculated that I was mentally ill for daring to have this very natural albeit subdued emotional reaction. In the end, he prided himself on giving me something that would be a shock character development for me. Here you go, I cheated on you, brutally. I'm unrepentant aren't you thankful that this will shape you into a better, stronger person? He said he did me a favor in this respect. One night I had an absolute breakdown. It was disgusting. And he looked at me with disgust. He just kept repeating get over it over, and over, and over again, even when I was screaming for him to just leave me alone, to stop saying that. He asked me why do four little words trigger you so much? Just. Get. Over it. I can't believe you're acting like this. Then finally, he tipped my face to his, and along those same lines of his character development spiel, said, breaking you will make you stronger, my name you'll understand one day. If you encountered one of these people, of the same nature my ex was, you already know that they are soulless beings. Some people really do lack any and all feeling, empathy. And they rely upon good-natured people like us to continue to think they have changed. There are those who care, like us, and there are those who do not, like them. Oftentimes, although we become experienced with knowing these people, oftentimes it's too difficult to discern who amongst us is like them. Take your experiences in stride, and going forward, know that anyone can be like this. 
At least now, we have the experience and tools to identify them before they become too enmeshed in our lives. Just to clarify, this was all three years ago, I am just venting. I've never really had a place to vent about what happened and I found this group very recently. I'll post the whole story with details one day and hopefully give a little better insight. I am now remarried, living in another state, happy and free. Thanks for all the kind words everyone. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.